Hello everybody and welcome back to VOD Reviews. Today we're taking a look at Funny Astro, who is an Overwatch League support player who plays for Philadelphia Fusion. We're going to be doing a dive into his Brigetta gameplay today across four games. Hope you take something away from this and how Brig is currently being played in the meta and how you can start incorporating it into your own gameplay. Have fun. Shoot. Interesting. Interesting. All right, so let's take a look at the comp real quick before we get started here. Uh, currently on Fusion running defense, we have the Briggs and this. And remember, this is the uh, this is the Owl, which again doesn't make any sense, but whatever. This is the Owl Hero pool. They're currently running the uh, Brig Zen with the Monkey Diva Soldier and Tracer, which is quite a weird lineup of heroes. But um, we're gonna see how they play this uh, on attack. Um, they're running the Mercy Zen. Uh, and we've been seeing a lot of this with the, we've been seeing the double shield resurgence back with the new the new patch um, especially in open division as well and the reaper in the tracer <clears throat> we're starting off his break here at least for first point we'll see if they make any swaps here throughout the round Five, four, three, yep alright sparks good luck man Okay, so Funny Astro playing back quite a bit here. Basically, basically, his job right now is to overheal. It looks like he's overhealing the DPS. So let's take a note of that, because we've talked about this in VOD reviews as well. Overhealing DPS is Brig. <clears throat> um, is Brig overhealing DPS is something that we see a lot in high high tier gameplay, but not a lot in in ladder. And I think it's really important. And we've talked about this with Sauce is that overhealing DPS basically makes them invincible, almost. You know. Especially if you have decent DPS. So Funny Astro is basically just playing on the flank. Trying to make sure uh, no flankers are getting around this this crucial corner for them to hold up. Meanwhile, they're strangely holding in this room here uh, with a dive comp. It's kind of weird. Again, feeling for, be, feeling for anything that's basically considered a flanker at this point. Is what it looks like Funny Astro is doing. We're we're kind of peeling for anything like the the tracer and the diva a lot. Um, peeling for flankers uh, with Brig here um, on this first point, mainly because if you guys take a look at this this first choke here, and I, I get I get holding this with a high ground. I don't know why they went in that room with the mega, um, but if you look at this here, so I can get out of here. Wow, can I get out, please? I'm still trying to learn how to get the frick out. Ah, ah. Hold on. Space. There we go. All right. So let's take a look at this real quick. Like this corner right here, like holding this is really crucial because this is a very easy avenue to flank in, um, especially down here as well. So holding the brig right here while your tanks hold up here. As you like, if you look at it, brig's not playing super close to the tanks, especially with this dive comp because brig is in a spot right now where she's not really like, she's not really super, uh, super survivable anymore. Like she can get deleted very quickly now. Man, girl, what's up, man? Good morning. What's up, Theory? You're 10 minutes late, but you're here. That's okay. That wasn't the plan. Okay, swapping to the Baptiste. So that was, that I, what I kind of assumed was that this was gonna be a first point pick here um, uh, for what they are running. Um, I'll make some notes here. Uh, it kind of makes sense that they're running the Brig on the first point. I didn't think they were gonna be running it the rest of the map though. So we see the quick swap to Baptiste here uh, and then the swap to uh, double shield meta. Um, with the with the May, which is gonna be interesting. May and a tracer currently, so it's gonna be a low damage comp, relying a lot on the two uh, tanks to um to do most of the damage here. So now, as we switch to the Baptiste, we're playing a lot closer to the tanks. Make sure we can uh, maximize the amount of AOE healing that we do. Again, the difference between Brig and Baptiste is that Brig can heal multiple heroes at once. Uh, consistently while Brig can only heal one uh, target with packs consistently and then whenever she gets a hit when the, the fights engage so like her her AoE healing isn't that consistent with the Inspire uh, but the Baptiste especially when you swap to this uh, double show comp is gonna be a lot more effective than a Brig <clears throat> so as you can see they're rotating unfortunately getting domed here by Zen but you can see the rotation that they're doing with the tanks Baptiste is almost always right on the tanks Pretty close too, pretty close. 
For, for the most part, like him, Baptiste staying safe is going to be closest to tanks, right? Because then he can start using their bodies as kind of shields to weave in and out of as, as flankers try to come up to him. Um, which is a lot different from Brig, who has her own basically counter for flankers, uh, so she can play back a little bit more. Meat shields. Okay, playing over here, trying to get the Zen out of that high ground. They're going to be rotating back with their tanks here shortly. We'll see. Okay, so they made another swap here to the Arissa Diva. Another strange comp. We see it, we're seeing a lot of counter swapping here. And I'd say probably for this third point, you can see him swapping very quickly. The third point, um, the Arissa Sigma was very strong. Um, unfortunately, they weren't able to hold that for very long. They swapped to the Diva mainly because this high ground is so inaccessible without a Diva or a Winston or a Ball or something. Um, so the best thing with the Orissa, it looks like they're they're still playing the Orissa. They're gonna need that comp. So still playing on that for mainly. I would say this: if you're running an Orissa currently, if you're running an Orissa, you almost always want a Baptiste because a lot of people are gonna play around your Orissa. Um. And your wrist is not going to be moving too much, so that means that AoE healing is going to be really important. So I'd say, especially for support players, if you guys have an Orisa and you don't have a Baptiste, I would pick a Baptiste. Most most of the time. Unless you have some weird, weird prompt. Playing a lot of these corners. Playing very far back as they push back into their team here. <clears throat> And you can see, even though even though the fight's like taking place on the payload, like they're kind of letting their team. Funny Astro here is like a backing up. They're not like committing their bodies to the point. Like the best thing, and we talk about this a lot, is that you your job is a support player. We can't currently run an Arissa nor a Baptiste. I know I'm saying I'm saying like in future because we're about to get another hero pool here soon. Um, so you can see that like we've talked about like as a support. Hey. If you're uh, enjoying the video, make sure to like it and consider joining us on Wednesdays where you can submit your own gameplay to be reviewed. Our player, you're you're never really like supposed to be on objective almost ever um, until you absolutely have to. So like this last moment, like, yeah, they could have touched, but they would have died anyways. So they were kind of just trying to get, uh, trying to stabilize as much as they could, trying to let people come out of the left, try to touch that payload. Um, so you can see funny Astro in this round, uh, I believe only died uh, twice, right? So they got rolled. Let's talk about this. They got rolled, and they died twice. They died once on first point. They died once on second point, and didn't die at third point. Almost died. So it was almost almost two three deaths. But still, for for getting rolled that hard, that's not that many deaths. <clears throat> and I think I think it goes to show like survivability as a player is a really important thing. And we talked about this on the stream is like getting your death count down as much as you can um is gonna pay off a lot in the long term as far as your survivability as well as like being mindful of where you're at in the map and how to play uh is really important he was supposed to be on point i've heard you say that about not being on point for characters from all roles no tanks oh 1000 percent always tanks 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 their job is to be on objective dps their job is to uh take care of flankers as well as help with damage focus on point if you do need to shoot something healers never touch objective I don't think I've ever said that about tanks. I've probably said it about DPS, but never, ever, ever about tanks. Ever. Yeah, 1,000% one, 1, tanks. Their their job is to be on objective when you're supposed to. The, the only time, the only time, aren't tanks supposed to go ahead of points to make space? Only when you're going for stagger kills. Only that. So we talked about leaving one person on payload while the rest of the team pushes up. That's a, that's a stagger technique. Um, that's That's the only time. But like when the objective is being played currently, like tanks, you know, when you're going for stagger kills, the objective currently isn't being played. So watch, watch the positioning here, especially running the Baptiste in attack here, um, sticking very close to the Orisa. Orisa using the back of the payload here for cover, to push the payload. Okay, most of the team staying pretty close to the Orisa so they can get that AOE healing from Baptiste. Baptiste staying again very close, very close. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Take a look at the bottom left, chat. Is there anything weird in the bottom left? Is that just how is that is that the, how the portraits work? It looks very strange. Is Baptiste supposed to be that far over? No, I can see the clipping. Baptiste's portrait is like super far over. You see it? 
Sorry, I just thought that was interesting. Rip. Okay, and watch out, he comes out early to make sure to save the Zen. Again, positioning themselves to where they're not taking a lot of cover when they get pushed like this. Backing up. Okay, because they're currently down their, their Orisa, right? So Orisa's currently walking back. Carpe goes down in the process. Orisa's now back. And again, goes right back to just sitting on top of uh, Orisa's butt here. You know, right when she comes back. Right when you lose that Orisa, they're back in our corners, waiting, 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 waiting. And then look at that, just look at how close we play to this Orisa, almost always. Again, using her using her body as a shield. Probably the sa is the safest place for Baptiste here. Who are the band heroes for Al? Uh, blah, 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 blah. I think they're so, no, not soldier. Um, I know this, we just talked about it. Uh, Sombra, Sombra and something else. Um, Winston and Lucio. Winston, Lucio, Sombra, and some other DPS, I forget. Well, it so. be worse. <clears throat> Widow is? I don't know who else. Then Widow, there. Boom. Winston, Soldier, Sombra, and Lucio. Yeah, okay, that was right. Yeah, yeah, this is last week, so never mind. Are the new bands coming out today? Uh, the, 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 maybe? I know for Open Division this weekend, that that is what we're playing with that hero pull. So I know that's a thing. I think as far as supports go, like this is this is a great example of how like, not complicated it is, but it's just proper positioning for some heroes is really important. Again, Baptiste almost always playing within range of their Orisa. Good use of immortality here. Still struggling on first point. But just taking a note of like of of how funny Astro positions himself behind the Orisa. Almost like just, literally just look at how close it is always. Always. Because Baptiste by himself against flankers is really not great. Very easily flanked. So, but next to an Orisa, it's really easy to mitigate the damage. So again, Baptiste, if anybody here plays Baptiste, take note of positioning with Baptiste. Usually, usually very close to your anchor tank. Very close. Look at that. Look at that. Great immortality. Probably saved like three people there. Looks like Philly's gonna be pushing in here. Okay, let's get alt usage here now. Cause we haven't really gotten to use the, the window very often here without without losing a fight. So, uh, funny Astro, we're gonna look at the positioning on how they use the, the window, as well as what they use to counter it. Now, window, window for the most part, from what I've seen is a very, uh, it's another proactive alt. You definitely wanna use it before a team fight starts so you can maximize the value. Get shields down as soon as possible so you guys can commit more resources uh, to health pulls instead of shields earlier on. We'll see. So we're waiting we're waiting basically until they, they want to start the engagement. And then we're probably gonna be starting it off with window. There's the immortality. There's the window. Alright, cool. So let's take a look at that real quick. I see a lot of people I see a lot of people mess this up, even in higher tiers here too. Um let's go back a little bit. Let them up. Alright. Okay, let's take a look at where he throws the immortality. Okay, immortality around corner. Actually, pretty close to being out in the open. I'm surprised he didn't throw it a little bit more to the left here. Um, throws it here, but then places the window down here, so it's very clear about where they can stand while still being in, in immortality. Because he did throw it back a little bit farther, so they could push up just a little bit here. Um, out in the open. So they, they push the window here. So they're not going to be engaging on that immortality, actually. That's probably why he did that, too. They're not going to be able to engage on the immortality here. Let me go in third person. Um, they're not going to be able... 
Duh. They're not going to be able to engage in the immortality here that much because the window, the pressure from the window is going to be pushing them back here. So if we take a look at this in 0.5, this team's going to rotate this way. Immortality's not going to go down. Uh, Arissa here is placed a new shield, so they're not able to do any damage. They're going to be waiting for that uh, matrix to go down, then probably throwing a pool to pull them back into the matrix here. There it is. Here's the pool. Trying to pull them back in. Looks like we grabbed two. Arissa and the D.Va. Matrix is pretty strong in there, though. So it puts a lot of pressure on the team. Able to get another, probably get their shields down again, which means they're going to have an advantage when Arissa throws down the new shield here. So Funny Astro actually goes down the process. I'd probably say playing a little too far up, trying to get a little too much damage there. Okay, there's, there's the free space with the new shield that we got from that. But what I, what I think is really important here is that uh, the usage of where you place your immortality is really important in the fight. No, Ali, good morning. Uh, did Philly lose the matchup entirely? I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't watch Owl live at all. Ever. Almost ever. Uh -uh. So, it looks like, yeah, Philly's going to lose this fight pretty quickly. Uh, and I think the I think the big indicator here is that they have more damage pressure with the um, with the Mercy, actually, with the damage boost on the, uh, the Hanzo. So they're actually able to take down shields a little bit faster than uh, the Philly with the Baptiste. Let me go down to Funny Astro here. So again, Funny Astro playing very close to the Orisa. Immortality comes out early. And, and what you can note here is that it's okay to use Immortality on yourself. We've talked about this with Sauce before. Using immortality on yourself is is always an okay thing if you're if you're thinking you're gonna die. Like if you can't if you are gonna die with that like if you don't use the immortality on yourself, always use it. Like don't be afraid to use it either. If you're like, maybe I'll die, maybe I won't, use it. Because if you get out of the fight, the amount of healing that your team's gonna lose if you go down is is so much more critical than if you if they lose immortality. And I see a lot of people holding on to immortality and then dying. Like, that's never okay as a Baptiste player. Like, you have to stay in that fight as long as possible. If you have to use Immortality on yourself, and only yourself, then by all means do it. It's 1 p.m. Good morning. It's always whenever we start stream like not at night. I always say good morning for some reason. It's a habit. We've been streaming mornings for two years. Uh, is it odd to have it different? But I can see why. Like some heroes that run rampant in silver would never get banned in Al if it's from most played yet. If you go off of ladder, then popular pick may never get banned. Uh, yeah, may, well, yeah, I, I get both, but it's it's making it very difficult to to apply overwatch league stuff to ladder which kind of stinks well i think they're gonna make a change here in the future i could see because it, it's too it's too many downsides too much negative not enough positive from it um baptiste is so fun i immortality myself all the time yeah which is okay i mean i wouldn't immortality yourself like just whenever like here you can see that he used the immortality to save somebody because he had he was full health so I'm saying, like, don't don't just get in the habit of using it for one usage, but always be ready to use it on yourself if you're going to go down. Like, if you're going to die without using it, use it. He probably places the window in front of Arissa here, I would assume. Oh, in front of himself. Okay. Interesting. Surprised he didn't use it in front of the Arissa. Put some good pressure on him, though. I like it. Immortality goes up pretty quick. Using the high ground now. Keep healing, then rotating back in with the tanks. Okay, interesting. It's kind of interesting how they use the high ground for that uh, the window. Uh, to put pressure on the enemy team. I don't think I ever use it on myself unless I'm in grab with my team. I would I would get in the habit of it again. If you like think of it like this: if you ever die with immortality, you have made a huge error. And like if you guys have notes or anything, I've actually got no. I've actually actually brought my notebook today. Um, if you die with, uh, if you die with, uh, immortality, that's like, that's probably the biggest no-no you can do. I'd say that is the biggest error you can make. Unless it's unavoidable, obviously. But I think for the most part, it's not like, like getting sniped by a widow. Like, 
Maybe it may or logged by a Hanzo, like maybe. Yeah. But I'd say if it was avoidable and you died with if you if you had time to react and died with immortality, like that's that's a big no no. Big no no. Big big. Al should just copy ladder, maybe with an extra ban or two from the popular picks from Al. An extra ban? Some more heroes ban? Damn. So I actually swapped to the brick pretty quickly here too. So after the cap that first point, swap to a dive with the Briggs Zen here. And I think honestly, Brig right now, we've talked about this uh on our open division team. Briggs in a really good spot. And I think I think our team's gonna be running Brig a lot more as well. Uh here for open division. See the rally. Alright, here we go. Here we go. This is cool. So we've talked about this in, in VOD reviews. Using the rally almost as soon as you can. Uh or like the earlier the better. Uh, in an engagement so if you can use it like right at the beginning of an engagement that's great if you can use it like slightly before the engagement that's also great if you can use it and then mid engagement if you have it look at how quick they pop that that's like immediate because again it doesn't matter if there's an engagement going on and it's still a winnable fight you want that armor out as soon as possible because the more time that you wait that means the the more critical your team's gonna get the more pressure they're gonna have on them that means they're gonna be rotating in ways that are more defensive instead of offensive right now so again, just general rule of thumb, Briggs ult, earlier the better. Like you never you never want to hold Brig ult for for just about anything, you know. I wouldn't I wouldn't really hold it for anything. Because it's armor, so it's not gonna get hacked. So cool cool little tidbit there, chat. You guys wanna again, if you if you guys play Brig or Baptiste, you know. Both those things, really important that you get them out. Uh, at least, at least for rally, get that out as soon as possible uh, for an engagement. But again, don't do it like in between engagements. Do it like pre-engagement or like right at the beginning. So you can see how quickly, quickly, funny Astro popped that rally there in the fight. It was like he was staring at it. Like I guarantee you, he was he was almost staring at the uh, the all charge bar, uh, so he could press Q right when he got it. Like again, that's that's another alt you just need to get used to like using sooner rather than later. Cause I'm seeing a lot of VODs where people are holding on to rally for way too long. Way, way, way too long. Oh crap. Hold on, I tabbed out chat. Ignore me, please. I'm boosted. Okay. So that was Junker Town. Uh some quick notes uh to recap on Junker Town. Um uh Brig for the most part, especially on defense. Uh appealing for flankers, like you can see be, between like playing with the tanks, like she was she was back a little bit, which is okay because Brig Brig has some survivability farther back against flankers. Like she's not gonna take too much damage. She will take a lot of damage in the front line, so you can see that Brig's gonna be playing a little bit farther back. She's not gonna be able to survive up there as much. Um, but always looking for flankers. Like you could see, Funny Astro was like checking corners almost always for any flankers that were going in the back line, and then just throwing out armor packs on their support to overheal. Overheal, overheal, overheal your squishies, either your other support player or your DPS. So overheal is, is a pretty busted ability. Don't be afraid to use that uh, preemptively on your DPS. Um, for Baptiste, if you uh, the biggest thing we had there was playing close to your uh, anchor tank. By the way, if you guys don't know what an anchor tank is, that is uh, any tank that anchors your position uh, in a fight. That Essentially, wherever that tank goes, your entire team follows. So that usually means... That usually means Reinhardt. That usually means Arissa. That some I would say usually means Winston. And that's that's about all the anchor tanks that we have right now. Um, sometimes Sigma. I guess sometimes Sigma. Yeah, you know what? I'll call Sigma an anchor tank as well. <clears throat> I stun Brigitte. You stand Brigitte the hardest. Brigitte is dude. She's nice right now. I still think Overwatch as a whole needs more heroes to get the best out of hero pools, so I'm kind of excited to see what Overwatch 2 brings us in the future regarding that. I am too. I'm actually really excited. I'm excited for that in Valorant. Like, I, I'm probably going to be starting... I'm going to start doing some research on Valorant as well here soon because um, there's some gameplay out. There's there's footage of Valorant now if you haven't seen it. Um, and it's going to be free to play, so it's very interesting. Um, so we're probably going to be doing some, some deep dives into Valorant here, uh, probably for the morning streams. 
Um, we'll keep the educational Overwatch streams, but I, I definitely want to start looking at Valorant and see what it has to offer as well um, for the future. <clears throat> Ryan Arissa, Winston, Ham, Hamster, and Sigma are iffy. Mm. I wouldn't really say Hamster because because Wrecking Ball is a disruption tank, which means if you're playing him correctly, you're most likely going from the back line a lot. Um, and swinging through like you're not really deciding where your team's playing. You're kind of just disrupting the enemy team So I really I wouldn't really call that an anchor tank What happens when they ban widow? Uh, literally the entire overwatch community has an uproar I can't bring my widow. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding by the way um, Yeah, so Baptiste uh, playing close to your Rissa because uh, Baptiste doesn't do well with flankers um, Is is usually how you want to play it? Uh, if they're not running any flankers, then yeah, you can back off a little bit. Like, if they're running a very static comp that's just, like, brawly, like, yeah, you can play farther back as Baptiste. Uh, 100%. But if there's any introduction of, uh, flankers, like, that's when you want to push up into your tanks. I think that kind of goes with almost any, any support. If you're, like, if you're getting just shat on by flankers, just try to play closer to your tanks. Like, you're gonna, you're gonna take some, some more damage, but if you're consistently getting flanked and your team can't peel for you, play closer to your tanks. You'll probably have a higher chance of surviving. Than if you uh, keep your distance. Um, just play Ash for him. Yeah, uh, I would, but I suck at her apparently. Um, and then for Baptiste, uh, never die with immortality. So if you're going to die, make sure you throw out your immortality first on yourself. And then if you don't have immortality, you can die. Then there you go. That's fine. You did everything that you could. Cool. All right. And then uh, finally, pop rally as soon as possible. Not as soon as possible, but like p during engagements. You know when it makes sense. Like, don't, don't do it the earlier, the better. So, like, if you can do it, like, right before the engagement, that's great. If you can do it, like, right after the engagement starts, that's still fine. If you do it mid or late engagement, you're kind of throwing the video game. TBH. Okay. All right, so this is Blizzard World Defense still on Funny Astro, playing Brigitta. Brigitta. We always kind of throw the video game, TBH. <laughs> true, true. Okay, let's talk about positioning here real quick. Uh, so, let's get an overhead, actually. That'd be huge right now. So we can just see how everyone's, everyone's playing. Get me out of the thing. There we go. Thank you. And let us get a spectator's overlay. All right, so Philadelphia Fusion's positioning right now is Brigetta, Soldier, and Zen on the high ground, which is a pretty survivable comp with Biofield, as well as Brigetta's armor packs and stun. Uh, Wentz is setting up at the high ground. Diva setting up right here underneath. Looks like they're going to be diving here. Uh, she's probably going to fly over the wall, I would assume, and then go for a backline hero, uh, just depending on the call. Tracer on the flank, so a pretty pretty spread out comp. Now, the nice thing about them playing high ground here is that they're, they're probably not going to be able to commit with just about anything. Even if they run dive, it's very easy to disengage and counter dive that. So this, like, especially not... I don't see a lot of people playing high ground. Um, so if you, if you want to note this, like... On Blizzard World, if you're not a tank, I mean, we talk about this all the time, guys. If you're not a tank, you don't have to play the objective, really. Like, playing on high ground is a lot smarter because you can always rotate and get with your team. If you're on the ground, you don't have any options except for, like, completely disengaging and then running up the steps and then taking high ground. So start start on high ground. Like, if, you, if you're planning on playing point or any, like, this corner even or over here, like, start high ground. Like, that's completely fine. Just make sure you're not by yourself. Like, ask, ask another friend to get over there. See how they engage this here. So, once he goes in the back line, actually, actually, the dive works. Is both the tanks diving on the on the Zen in the back line? So, they get the res off, but Philadelphia gets mercy now. It's quite funny, Astro here. Yeah. 
Brigida. <laughs> Brigida. Look at this. Resetting high ground. Same people, right? Zen. Oh, we got a diva up there now. Uh, but Zen and Brig. Always chilling out with that Zen, right? There's the soldier. Cool. So we're now reset on high ground. Overhealing the DPS. Overhealing Zen. Overhealing uh, Tracer again. Look at how look at how quickly these packs go out too. Healing up Poco because they do need healing. There you go, waiting on the pack. Get it out on Tracer. I, I think it's funny that they don't heal the soldier too because the soldier does have the uh, the the pod. And actually choosing to overheal the tracer, overhealing the soldier. Kind of smart, too. Come here and get cool. All right. Brig is pretty, pretty hot, to be honest. Dude, Brig is my, like, biggest crush on Overwatch. Not going to lie. Yo, a frozen hero man. Thanks for the host, dude. Welcome in, dudes. We're doing a deep dive on Funny Astro today. So that's fun. What's up, Frozen? How'd your stream go, man? Okay, basically just falling at the tanks now. Surprising that they're going for the heal. I mean, I guess so, because, again, they're the big healer in this comp at the zone. Okay. Frontline, you win since she's using the pack on there. Yeah, not, not really getting flanked since they already won this fight, so they're not going to be ever healing any of the squishies. Basically, just over, uh, just healing whoever's in the front line. But you're gonna, again, you're going to see like this pre-engagement stuff, like over healing, over healing Zen and Tracer and maybe Soldier. Okay, over healed Zen. Healed up Tracer. Popping the rally early, 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 and we just talked about this last map too. Check this out. Check out how early they pop this rally, guys. Everyone Look at this. Look at this. The moment they hear an alt go off, this right here, they hear the dragon go off, instantly pop that rally. Okay, and they are in that fight. They are deep in that fight. Okay, yeah, getting everybody rallied up. So again, a lot of people hold on to rally for just way too long. Like, pre-engagement, like right before the engagement or right at the beginning of the engagement is exactly when you want to pop rally. Almost always. What's up, Star Drummer? How you doing today, man? I have another video dropping at 3 p.m. Hey, nice, nice. Yeah, look at it. Just over, like literally, just overhealing any squishy on their team. Nice stun there. I, I like to see it, how often they, they don't really drop their shield too often, do they? They kind of leave that up pretty often. Unless they're going for the the swing for the the inspire. Yeah, not a, not a lot of dropping shield. A lot, like a lot of holding it, like even outside of fight. I guess this is a good habit to get into, so you don't get. Sniped randomly, which makes sense. But also, you get the third-person perspective. You get to gather more information. And I don't think I don't think it cuts down your speed that much. So it's pretty smart. Despise enemy Briggs with a passion. Uh, I don't. I think Briggs in a really good spot right now. I think she's I think she's fun to play, and she's not that. I don't feel very oppressed when I play against her. To be honest, that's coming from a main tank chat. Um, by the way, welcome in everybody from Frozen Hero Stream. Glad to have you guys here. Today we're doing a deep dive on Funny Astro uh, during his last game against uh, Paris. Um, reminder, guys, we have VOD reviews tonight. So if you guys are unaware of our VOD reviews, we do uh, free coaching uh, in VOD reviews in our Discord. Uh, join our Discord, exclamation Discord in the chat. We'll get you the link. You guys can join it up, submit your gameplay in there, and we're going to be starting at 6 p.m. today uh, as we take a look at your gameplay, as well as everybody else's giving you things to work on throughout the week to get better at the Vigi game. And we, I think, I believe we have a special guest coming today who's specializing in tanks. Uh, so we're going to have a tank, a GM tank player come and, uh, I believe, I believe. I'm, I'm verifying right now, so. 
Top 500 DPS doable in next month? Uh, I don't know. 111 SR away from GM. Get it, gamer. Get it. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Actually, here again. If you guys aren't part of our Discord, sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna tab out here for a second. Uh, if you guys aren't part of our Discord, make sure you join that up. Submit your gameplay in hashtag bot reviews. Okay, so I kind of missed the attack there, unfortunately. Uh, but for the most part, it looks like they're just pushing up with their tanks. Again, over healing the squishies on their team. Look at that. Like, like they don't even need healing, chat. And they're just overhealing him. Almost on cooldown. Got about two packs remaining here. Let's see if they use them. So it looks like they're it looks like they're packing like slightly before the engagement. Yep. So packing the tracer. I assume they're gonna pack the Zen here shortly. Right when they think they're gonna be pushing in. Packing Zen. Healing the diva, packing the soldier, trying to diva snatching it though. Okay. Look at how fast they rotate for this too. <laughs> packing the tracer again. Yeah, as you can see, like like tanks aren't taking precedent at all. It's always about keeping those DPS up because the tanks are going to be able to take a little bit of damage. Uh, in survive, especially with the rally, or the the inspire, so they're kind of playing for the for the rally to heal the tanks for pushes like that. Um, but mainly overhealing the the squishies. Clear comms, clear comms. We're not getting paid to tee hee here. Three, three. I'm excited. Yeah, I don't know if you guys talked about it. I'm excited for the Sunday uh, coaching thing because I I'm interested to see your comms. I think it'll be I think it'll be very fun to talk with a team about uh, communication. Clearly, our sponsors didn't like our past performances. Lordy, got to hear our comms tonight. I am. Oh, you guys got footage of comms? Yes, I like that. Okay, again, ever healing the backline as much as possible here. There's the rally popping in as soon as possible, right? Immediately, immediately. Like beginning of engagement. Surprised they put the shield up that late. I would be very nervous. Okay. There, gets it on the soldier. Surprised they're playing the corners here so much too. Pushing with the tanks so they can get the swing for the Inspire to keep healing their team throughout this engagement. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting game here. Very interesting game. At least how they played. Like, if you guys take a look, really take a look at this. Like, Funny Astro's not big braining anything really. They're not. It's not like he's like like massively outplaying anybody. He's just doing the right things at the right time. That means overhealing it, overhealing the squishies before an engagement. On defense, overhealing like right before the enemy team pushes in. Um, popping the rally early in engagements, uh, and then healing the tanks, healing the tanks when the uh, supports aren't going to need overheal, or when they're like super critical and they're going to die without it, kind of thing, you know. So very, very interesting. Um, still seeing a crap ton of Brigetta. Crap ton of Brigetta, Brigetta, Soldier, and Zen this, with this dive comp. So weird. So weird seeing a Soldier with this dive comp. You know. Which I guess is just for, for pressure and damage. And the fact that he's uh, got the mobility to still get out. And uh, also to sustain the healing. Because with Brig and Zen, you're not going to have that much healing. Soldier's most likely going to be potting a lot of the tanks. Or does it sustain the backline too? So we'll see here. 
So again, taking the high ground, right? No need to play on the ground just yet. Taking the high ground so they can, te can contest. Take care of flankers on defense here. Packing the monkey since he's holding the choke. Still packing the tanks quite a bit here. I think it's mainly because because uh, this choke is such a fire lame that the tanks are going to be taking the majority of the damage. And Funny Astro hasn't spotted any flankers going in yet, so we're not really... Uh, there's the pack on the tracer. Okay, barrier down, rotating around. Keeping up with the Zen, though. That Zen, Soldier, and Brig always playing together like that. Okay, commits a little too much here and takes uh, takes a lot of damage here very quickly, uh, especially from the Hanzo era. So this is gonna be the first point for fusion. Um, but with that being said, we saw we saw a little bit of a different gameplay here. Is that they were they were packing the tanks more, and I think mainly it's just because the tanks were holding the choke uh, more intensely. So it wasn't much of a dive. It was more of like sustaining, trying to sustain the choke, so they couldn't push through. Uh, which means the the Zen and the soldier weren't as pressured as the tanks were at that point. So it's a pretty good call there. Uh, but again, pretty low healing, so it's gonna be hard to uh, it's gonna be hard to hold those chokes uh, with this kind of comp. Soldier's probably being seeing playtime because of the Kree ban. Yeah, probably true. I'll see. Are there any heroes who don't take a lot of skill to be good at though? Uh, no, I wouldn't say so. I mean, there's heroes with different skill caps, but all heroes are pretty... I mean, there are some that are... Yeah, I would say Moira. Moira's probably the one example of, like... And that doesn't mean you can't play her. That doesn't mean you can't one-trigger, you know? It just means, like, she she's... Uh, making mistakes as Moira isn't as oppressive and, and punishing as other heroes. Like, she's probably the least... Yeah, yeah, mistakes on Moira are the least, uh... I'm trying to think of a good word for it. Like, your mistake, your mistakes don't come back with consequences as hard as other heroes. You know. Like, Ryan, if you walk, like, a little too far forward, you're, like, instantly dead. Uh, Ana, if you're just a little too far from your team, like, you're dead. Moira, like either of those, she's she's pretty much fine. She has good sustainability. She can fade out from a lot of stuff. She has a high healing rate. Her coalescence is pretty. It charges very fast and it's very good. You know, getting pretty decent on Ana lately. Matillo, Rip being a mercy man. I think Ana's pretty good, dude. I mean, Ana's always been fun. I think I think everyone should be competent on Ana, mainly because she's really fun. Okay, kind of playing the tanks. Especially, they're probably calling this out in the comms as far as like a very fast push. So that's that's when you see that Funny Astro's doing the, uh, trying to get the Inspire by hitting the enemy team. It's because their entire team is pushing together and she's trying, and Funny Astro's trying to sustain uh, the entire team throughout that fight. And they're going to be very, very close quarters. So the Inspire is very effective uh, for those kind of pushes. So outside of that, if they're not, if they're not doing a very quick team engage, are they sitting down right now? Oh, they're emoting so they can see. That's funny. Um, <laughs> that is funny. Uh, outside of that, if they're not doing that, but look at that popping in before the engagement starts, almost making them making them commit to a fight. When there you go. Let's. I kind of want to see this real quick. I want to see this like super. Hold on, let's watch this. So I think that's it. Okay. So if you watch this, if you watch this right now, um, Fusion has a uh, rally. Eternal does not. So they see this opportunity. I don't think I don't know if they know if they have rally or not. They probably don't. Um, but they pop it early, pre-engagement because they feel like a fight's about to come on. Plus they're saying that they're going to be pushing in here. They push in as a team, get the Inspire healing, and then Eternal gets the rally, pops it as soon as possible. Even though they're down somebody, I think this was a mistake here because there's so so much sustain here from Fusion that popping rally from Eternal is probably a waste. So they actually pop this rally try to counter which they don't have the alts to follow up on i think this was a very bad call from fd god on eternal like that that was definitely a wasted rally there because uh, you can't uh, the fusion already has all the sustain all the armor they have six you have five there's no way there's no way you're winning that fight so i think the the only down upside to that is that they sustained them so the rest of fusion didn't get all charge and they didn't have to worry about a regroup but at that point i don't think it's worth it 
So I think I think that was a bad call. Your garbage at Brigmoyer, Lucio, Mercy. Basically, all the supports. <laughs> Aim just takes practice. It takes practice and having a good system and a good mouse. I'll say that. It's definitely, definitely pay to win sometimes. I mean, you need to have the right equipment to do the job. Like, I have an EC2A, which has a really good sensor. I have a 144 hertz monitor, which when I'm streaming, I don't, I don't really get consistent frames, which is not good. But when I play outside of it, it's a very consistent experience. So it's a lot easier to work on aiming them. Give it again. Playing back here. Armoring up the tracer. Look at that. Look at that. It, there's people on their team that need healing and then they're armoring the tracer. This is what I mean. Overhealing is so oppressive sometimes. Because if you can keep your tracer up, she can actually engage and kill on the back line. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is good stuff. This is good stuff, man. This this should be a big old, like, for, for what Sauce talked to us about during VOD reviews. This should be a big old fat I told you so kind of moment for him. Because really, that, what do we see from funny here? It's just, just overhealing. Yeah, look at that. Overhealing uh, squishies all the time. The bad bad when you got to practice your Lucio a lot more. Yeah, it's been it's actually really been really fun watching Noelle play uh play this you. I was enjoying it. I can do pretty well with them, too. Well alright. Better than I do already. <laughs> cool, armoring up on the tracer again here. Going in for the stun on the diva. Again, I I feel like Bunny doesn't really like go in for shield bashes too often. Which is fine, you know? I, I think Shield Bash is, is almost primarily reserved for flankers. Got the whip shot ready. Probably gonna go for it right here. Yeah, there we go. So arming up the tanks. Now, this, this fight's kind of breaking loose, so they're just going for cleanup right now. But, yeah, and I think we can see that uh, same thing on defense here. Really good defense. Yeah, I feel, I feel like Fusion's really getting their, their stuff together in this push. I want to be able to aim with my arm. It's hard to transition. Uh, aiming with your arm. Make sure your chair is at the right height, by the way. Let me talk about this real quick. Because uh, at least with aiming with your arm, if you're not at the right height, you're not hinging at your, your shoulder. Sometimes you're going to be hinging at your elbow, which is a problem because my chair keeps sinking. So, like, I keep I keep using my... my, uh, my uh, elbow to arm or to, to aim when you want to use your whole arm to aim so it comes from your shoulder from that kind of motion so if you can move with your shoulder like that and get uh mainly most of your your muscle um the reason behind that by the way if anybody's interested in arm aiming versus wrist aiming um the reason that it's so important is because just like anything else muscle memory is extremely important and if you're using your wrist, you're not developing any muscle memory. Uh, if you use your arm, though, you're developing muscle memory as far as how you work out your muscles and move the mouse. So it's a lot more, it's all more accurate to use your arm, uh, specifically because of muscle memory. Do I sit with my chair max height? And to get higher, I sit on my legs 90% of the time I play. <laughs> why, wait, wait, why does your chair have to be a max height? Is it a teeny chair? I have the huge Razer OW mouse pad. Okay, it will. It will. Rip me with a shoulder injury. Yeah, that's probably yeah, that's probably not good then. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Defined average height. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the attack here. Again, overhealing the tracer pre-engagement. Not really pushing in until the tanks start pushing in. Making space here on the left. Again, but disengaging pretty quickly. Going in for a, a few. Inspire hits them backing out. Just to get the healing from it. For the team.
Yeah, again, you, you can see Funny's not swinging too often. It's like maybe one, maybe two swings at a time, and then back to shielding. Okay, here now the engagement's barking out. Kind of going in as fast as we can. Again, trying to heal the tanks up with the Inspire. Packing the squishies. So I think that's a good, especially if you guys are thinking about playing Brig. Is, at least in this dive comp, I don't know how it's... I think it might work the same for uh for the more of a static comp with the rhyme. But at least with the the more dive comp here, um running yeah, especially packing the squishies more often and then swinging when you need to heal the tanks. Trying to get in the front line. Like if you think your tanks are going to be taking a lot of damage, like swinging into the front line as long as you're not in danger of dying there. Um Obviously, this is a very coordinated team, so take take what you will from this. I mean, honestly, the probably the most consistent thing for you to do on ladder that'll improve your gameplay is is packing your squishies uh, pre engagement. So, like when you think of fights about to start, just pack pack up your uh, your squishies. Five foot six, heck off. I think it's five foot seven for females. Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe that's men. I don't know. In fact, the average height of women worldwide is five foot four, so Noelle is tall. Ew -wee. Ew -wee. You want to be six foot? No, you don't. No, you don't. Being over six foot sucks. Nothing fits. And you have to eat a lot of food. Which might be fun for a lot of people, you know? <laughs> Alright. So the engagement happening up here, again, we, we're packing the squishies as much as possible during this engagement. I'm surprised they haven't dropped just yet. I guess waiting for their, their tanks here. Still playing with the support so they can maintain the high ground advantage here. Again, the, the soldier, the soldier is Zen and Brig playing like a freaking unit over here, dude. Never leaving each other. I think it's an awesome thing to think about, which we, I might note for our open division thing, if we're planning on running any kind of dive, is that the soldier, the soldier, the Brig, and the Zen almost always play together. Yeah, almost always. You can always see where the Zen is. You can always be near the, the soldier. It's crazy how much, how much, Sustain. I, I, I think that's it. It's just the, the sustain between the Brig Inspire, the Soldier Biofield, and the pressure from the Zen Discord is so much. Like, look at this. They even, they even bring this thing back here. Okay, Brig going for the help back here. Ooh, didn't get it. So, uh, and that's something we can talk about is like, is, is why I think we, uh, we basically just talked about why that works. The, the brig, the Zen and the, the soldier, she protect and she attack. That is true. That's true. I just want to intimidate people. I'm no longer a baby and protector. <laughs> I am protector Knowles. You're six foot two and a bit. So you have to yeah, you're about the same height that I am then, man. But I must eat much food. I know it sucks. I literally can't gain any weight because I'm so tall that I have to eat so much food just to actually like hold on to uh, to weight. Um, okay. It's unfortunate. Didn't eat the pulse bomb. It's okay. Actually came in pretty quick. Here's the rally as soon as possible, right? Right when right when they get the rally, they're popping that, especially when the fight's not when it's still 66 like this. Yeah, not holding on to it for too long. Because that's an ult. That's an ult. That's okay to use early. It's not okay to use late. Okay. Cool. Let's see if they're disengaging from this. I forget to eat when I play Overwatch. I did the same thing. Because we're hungry for SR, dude. It is it is a meal in its own. When you when you end with more SR, you you feel full. Anyways, you're like, yes, I can survive on this. Again, looking almost looking to like going out of their way to pack their squishies. Not wasting the stun till absolute absolutely necessary. Looks like. I probably would have been using it a little bit earlier, but just not ju just try to get the diva. But I, it looks like they're holding onto the the stun longer than you normally would. It's not really much of a spam ability anymore, I guess. Um, but yeah, if you guys like again, I keep I keep mentioning it, but I think it's so important for big players right now. 
at least for where she's at right now is at like just just watch just watch this gameplay just watch how often they pack the zen and pack the tracer <laughs> that's it that's the only two people <laughs> Look at it, they're, they're looking for it. They're waiting. There you go, just got it again. Again, Tracer. Stunning the D.Va, interrupt her fly. Okay, packing because the Winston's critical. Back to the Zen. On the point. And a cap for the win. Nice. Hey, did you guys notice anything uh, about that that I did not comment on? Feel free to let me know in chat. Um, especially for support players that might have a little bit more experience than I do on these. If you guys, six foot seven is excessively tall. Yeah, that's that's really tall. Like that's not good for your health. That was some impressive big brick plant. I don't think it was. I don't think it was impressive. Not saying that's a bad thing. It's not like it. Uh, my point is, is that I don't think I don't think Funny Astro's big braining anything. They're just doing the right thing. And that's what I'm saying. It's so easy to apply this brig stuff into ladder because if you're packing your squishies, it's going to be almost impossible for the enemy to kill them from being flanked, which means that they're going to be more sustainable. Um, and then they're it, only doing one or two swings to inspire to heal their tanks. Healing the tanks went super critical. And then rallying pre or early on in the engagement. Like if you look at this, I swear, if they play brig on this next one, I'm not going to comment. On my, I'm not going to comment. I don't, actually, I don't think Funny Astro plays on Koth. Ready for battle. They do. Watch. I'm not even going to comment this one. I want you guys to watch this. J just watch. These these things. This is not big brain at all. Okay. Ready? These are the things. Pack the squishies. Heal your tanks when you absolutely have to. Get one or two swings into Inspire. And then a rally pre or early engagement. If you guys watch those four things, those all happen this game. And there's nothing nothing else is outside of that. Some some big break stuns every now and then. To take care of like Diva and Flankers. Yeah, like Diva, Winston, and Tracer. Like that's that's all they're gonna be stunning here. All these things are gonna happen. Join this matchup. Yeah, all the portraits are like shifted left today, by the way. Very strange. Now show them. Your teams never peel unless you sleep somebody. Hello. Hello. <laughs> What's peeling? They're probably regretting they packed the diva right there too. There you go. Back on the sun. Back on the sun. Back on the sun. Stunning the diva. Back on the sun. <laughs> and the two back to back sleeps on Tracer and Theory murdered one and Junkrat murdered the other. True. That was True. Fun. Very nice. Here it is, rally early. Oh! Guess what? They held on to rally way too long there. I don't think they thought the engagement was happening here. This this goes to show you that they pop. This is this is what you get when you pop a rally too late. By the way. Let's back this up just a little bit. Okay. 
This they should like. All right, so I think they get it right here. They should have been trying to get this rally right now. I would I would I would have whip shot the diva. There we go. Whip shot diva. Rally pop it. Boom. Pop it. 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 Because guess what? They didn't have full armor at this point. Right when they got pulsed. Look at this. There's the pulse right here. They didn't have any of their armor when this pulse came out. If they would have gotten, if they would have gotten pulse, if they would have rallied this just a little bit sooner, this this pulse wouldn't have killed them. This is a big mistake right here. Right? They had 255. Yeah, 255 health, and I think pulse does 300, right, chap? I think, maybe. I don't know. Something like that. Yep. Funny Astro made a mistake, chat. And he didn't pop the rally soon enough. Bah, bah, bah. Yeah, he would have had enough armor for that pulse. Zen. Wah, wah, wah. Wait, did wait, 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 was that three for eternal? That's all the that's all the games we get. Wait. Oh wait, never mind. That was the that was the freaking first round. Never mind. I thought <laughs> one round on caught. Bummer. Pro players make mistakes. They're just like us, but smarter. -er. Yeah. And they also keep track of like what you're supposed to do. Like when you obviously when you play this game, like that's all you do. Like you you spend a lot of time figuring out what what's the right thing to do. As a as as what hero currently, because stuff you know stuff shifts. Like meta shift and like what you're supposed to do in certain situations change. And like it's not that they're any. I wouldn't say they're much better than us. Like probably they have better aim than us, just by a little bit though. But it's really about just knowing what to do. Yeah, and like like Mattel has said, just being smarter. -er, you know. Cause stuff changes very quickly in Overwatch. Even though, even though you think it doesn't take that long, like like the way that you play a game, if you want to be on like the top, it changes very quickly. Like game sense wise. Let's watch this again. Packing the tracer. Packing the diva. Cause again, you you might be on ladder playing Brigetta, and you're most likely not gonna have this comp. This is a very this is a very refined comp with the tracers and or Winston Diva Soldier like almost exclusively. Okay, as you can see, Brig, Soldier, Zen, playing together. Tanks off to the side a little bit. Don't have to worry about counter diving for their supports, or more so peeling for those supports because they know they have sustainability. Let's see if the soldier and the Zen drop here. They do, they rotate with the Brig. Look at that, look at that. They're all rotating together. But that's probably not gonna happen in your rank games, so we're not gonna, we're not gonna talk too much about that. That's why I haven't, I've only mentioned it a couple times. Okay. Now it's actually a weird rotation from Funny there. Uh, rotated away from the team. So trying to learn how to alt track the other team. I can track two, three alts, but other than that, I have no information about the other alts. Yeah, it's fine. It practice Mattel. It's all practice. Only Super and Kabaji make no no mistakes. All their top 500 pros make a lot of mistakes. It's true. It's true. That and maybe Rouge, huh? Probably. <laughs> also been using more nades more aggressively too, because ML7 said so. Uh, yeah, 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 you can definitely use nades more aggressive. I agree. Especially if they're running a Ryan. It, again, it depends on the comp. If they're running a dive, you're gonna want to use it more defensively. Because most of the time, if you're getting dove anyways, and you use it defensively, you're gonna anti a tank. But against Reinhardt's, yeah, use them aggressively. Because once you anti a Reinhardt, if you guys ever watch my streams when I get anti, I'm basically useless. I either have to, I, I literally have to back off and hold shield, or I die. Rally early, 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 early before the engagement starts, right? Check that out. Packing up the zone. Make sure they block. Hey. Yeah, not a lot of people think about 
countering that diva too before they get back to the mech. Press the tracer. Uh, looks like they're gonna pack the Winston. Still looking at the new pack. Look at how quickly they react to this new pack. Go, new pack. I guess they're waiting. They're probably they're probably keeping him on reserve till next fight. Not like stupid. Yeah, I noticed if purple the other Ryan, we would usually win the engagement. Yeah, that's literally how it is. So that that means that means you have to have a good diva. And again, that's why at least for me as a Reinhardt, I feel so out of control in my games because if I don't have a good diva, I I I'm not a good Ryan. I, I will die as Ryan. So it usually comes down to who has the better diva, who eats more nades, and whether or not the Ana actually anti's the Ryans. A lot of times. Almost makes me want to play D.Va. Even though I'm not really that great with her. As long as you eat nades for your Reinhardt, like, you guys basically win the game. Cool. Alright, second round of Philly. You always scream at enemy Reins to drop their shield. It never works. <laughs> Literally scream through the microphone. Drop your shield. Do it. I dare you. The Brig Overheal, why they reverted the McCree 250 HP buff? Uh, no, not really. No. McCree, McCree with 250 is just too, he's just too bulky of a, of a DPS. He just, he does too much damage. He does too much damage and has too much HP. Now he's, de he definitely should be a 200 HP hero. The amount of damage he outputs is insane. I mean, it's not as much as other heroes, but it's still like, uh, you know. It's not, it's not justifying 50 extra HP compared to Hanzo. Like, Hanzo does more damage and has the lunge, which is more mobility. But McCree has more consistency in his DPS, which is his trade-off, is that he has less mobility, but the same HP. And a little bit less damage. It's just the consistency that makes him... <clears throat> that it is what he is, you know. Soldiers obviously is even more mobility than Hanzo, as well as the sustainability sustainability with the biofield. Nice DPS. Okay. I think we're still we're still looking at this as like is how Okay, yeah, we pack pack the tanks when they're literally about to die. I need here. Oh yeah, I should remind everybody, a hey, uh, pugs are on Friday if you guys didn't know. Bugs have been moved to Friday. Um, sorry again about Monday. I, I literally, I would have, I would have been in a pissy mood if I was streaming. So I, I didn't want to bring that to Pugs. So um, Friday though is when they were moved to. As well as tonight is VOD reviews again. If you guys haven't submitted your VODs, submit them in our Discord under hashtag VOD reviews. As if I'm gonna play healer on Pugs. Why not? Back to packing the Zen. Back to packing the Zen. I don't want to play support, but most players play support. A lot of players play support, dude. The key times for support have been crazy lately. Soldier Zen. Brig, playing together. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Womp womp. Think you're first for bots tonight? Uh, Well, tanks tanks are going to go first. As long as our tank bot reviewer comes, uh, is able to do it. Uh, tanks are going to be going first today. I still haven't heard back though. But he hasn't been online on Discord, so he probably hasn't seen the message yet. <clears throat> VOD review? What? Noel, are you submitting for VOD review tonight? DPS and support are pretty close to being evened out as of late. I know, which is crazy. Tanks are still like 45 seconds. I know. <laughs> it's crazy. It's actually crazy. Packing Zen, packing Zen, packing Zen. And honestly, even if you guys are running a Zen, I'd recommend doing it on your, your other healer as well anyways. Especially the brig, you know. Just just keep just keep make sure you keep overhealing your, your other support. And it'll make it a lot easier for them to heal. 
because they're they're not gonna be so worried about repositioning all the time so they don't die that they can actually output healing on your your tanks so it's kind of cool don't know you're gonna watch all of it mr streamer man yes i am gonna, i'm gonna watch all of it i don't have a scrim tonight so i don't have to cut it off early that was the only reason i had to i had to cut it early it's because i had a scrim Get a boop. Get a boopy boop. Cool. Yeah, they're taking this back pretty quickly. You see how important high ground is. Like, very rarely, if you guys have noticed, this this point especially, like, holding high ground is so crucial. The fight rarely takes place on the point. The only people, and again, the only people that contest the point are tanks, right? Tanks go down, contest the point, and then retake high ground. At least with this dive comp. But even if you're running like a Ryan Diva, like then you need to send your Diva down to touch and you hold the high ground. Like basically whoever holds high ground has like a serious advantage. Ooh no, he didn't have shield bash to get over there. Damn. Bomber, bomber. That might have won him the game, dude. If if funny Astra had shield bash to get back. All right, Lucio for speed. Hey, yo, Mammy. With a, a double host from Mammy, I'm honored. I'm honored. By the way, hold on. Let's welcome in. By the way, if you guys don't know who Mammy is, I don't know why my shoutouts aren't working. But go follow Mammy, dude, on on Twitter. Follow her. She is a uh, she is a French support player that we used to do it with quite a bit. Go follow her. She's awesome. She's the best. She's the number one best. Hello, everybody from Mammy Stream again. Hi, everybody. Currently, we're doing a. Uh, if you guys speak English, uh, if not, uh, bonjour. Right? Is hello in French? Bonjour. Okay. Um, hello. Uh, we're currently doing a deep dive on Funny Astro in Philadelphia Fusion. So we're kind of talking about his support gameplay. Um, so that's what we're doing right now. We're finishing up actually here very shortly. We're, we're just at the last game. Um, so we're kind of talking about uh, things that you can do uh, that the pros do as, as far as supports. So and we've taken a really, really deep look at Brigetta uh, today. Really deep look at Brigetta. Yeah, Fusion. What's up, Terrapu? Welcome back. Hello. What's up, Jerry? Hello. Hi, I suck in English. That's okay. That's alright. Mammy, how's stream go today? Hit <laughs> Little, little. Sick. Okay, so Funny Astro went back for this last point on Lucio. Just for speed. Looks like they also stopped Lucio just to get back to this last point here. 99% of both sides. In the beat and I, I i think i think it's kind of spoiled since uh this is the last game i assume and philadelphia has two and i think wait maybe they both i think they both have two actually i think about it um interestingly enough though so he's gonna be speeding back here no they lose it all right so philadelphia actually loses that one well dang dude i guess they lost the first one then so i guess this was the score is that that they lost this one this was eternal this was Paris. This was uh, Paris. This was, these two were uh, right, Philadelphia, and this one was, I guess it was three. I don't know. Strange. All right, um, quick reminder to everybody. If you guys are new here as well, we do VOD reviews every Wednesday, completely free to you guys. So if you guys ever wanna uh, submit gameplay in our Discord, we're gonna be doing VOD reviews tonight, which means to take a personal look at your gameplay, giving you things to work on throughout the week. Uh, we're doing that in our Discord. Feel free to join if you would like. It's completely free only to people from Mammy stream because limited time offer because Mammy's awesome. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be giving free VOD reviews to everyone from Mammy stream tonight. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. We do it for your girls. Um, I've been a Shanghai Dragons fan ever since their legendary defeated run. The true comeback story. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. 
kidding, chat. God, God dang, dude. All right. So let's talk about some of the some of the stuff we saw from Funny Astro today, guys, because we saw a lot of uh, Brig gameplay. Um, not really much Lucio, but again, I from what I've seen in the past two games is like it's just a reinforcement of number one, packing your healers. Uh, number two. Uh, holding your shield bash for crucial moments, and then number three, uh, using your rally uh, before or right at the beginning of engagements. Like that's that's about it. And like it's crazy how much influence Brig has on a game right now, and how I wouldn't say how little you need to know about her, because it does take some practice to actually recognize those moments and make sure you're doing the right stuff at the right moment while also positioning correctly. But that's like the big thing that I think is new for Brig is to how she used to be played was very aggressive in the front line she's now like making like she's almost playing passive with her healers like uh healers in the uh in in other squishies like tracer and how important it is for the overheal uh on those kind of here uh heroes so if you made it to the end congratulations on making it through the vod of funny astro hope you guys got something away from that and how they're playing brig in the current dive uh, ish meta in overwatch league make sure you subscribe for more follow us on twitch so you can catch us live and ask us questions we got free vod reviews all that good stuff see you next time